How are you? Nice to meet you. Good. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. I love your painting behind you. My what? Nice. Oh, you're Isn't painting. The... Yeah. Yeah. I'm blocking it, aren't I? I don't know. It's yes. very beautiful. Patricia Broderick. We have several mm -hmm. of her paintings. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very cool. So my first question was, um, how would you describe Succession Season 3 to people who haven't seen it yet? Um, in Succession Season 3, um, everything is, uh, it's basically war. Um, Kendall uh, looks vanquished at the end of Season 2, and he launches, I mean, the main theme of it is that he launches a full-on attack against the company, and um, it's excruciating and humiliating for him, and it's it's a nuisance for his father and siblings. His siblings get very nasty back with, you know, it gets, turns ugly. It's like the, the it turns quite ugly. Um, and then the, uh, the how, how in depth do you, that, that's good for the overall. That's good. I think that's good. I think that's good for the overall picture. I think that's, a, that's enough. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank so you. Can, you um, can you talk a little about your character, uh, Jerry Kalman? Yeah. So Jerry Kalman, um, at the beginning of the series is the general counsel for this huge media conglomerate. And it's a very powerful position. And she's very much like the power behind the throne. Like she's all about acquisitions and she knows, as one character says, uh, she knows where all the bodies are buried. And then what happens keeps being dangled is that she might be named CEO um, because uh, Logan gets in trouble at one point and, and everyone feels, seems to feel that the shareholders need someone else to be the CEO and the kids are all vying for it. And um, so in season three, Jerry gets named CEO, but she, her, as I've said before, her job doesn't change that much because she still was calling all the shots in a surreptitious way. And now she is um, calling all the shots, but you wouldn't know it because Logan is still bellowing at everyone and seeming to boss everyone around. Except yeah. that Jerry does get her way finally with the, the thing she's trying to get him to do all season is to cooperate with the investigation, the federal government, and he doesn't want to. And um, she starts by really making a logical case for it. And she ends up really yelling at him. And I, 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 it, I, it occurred to me later, I don't know that any characters ever successfully yelled at Logan and got their way. So it was this kind of, you know, landmark moment for me, um, and maybe in the show where you, you know, of, of the unlikely sort of mole woman is sort of calls me at one point, um, you know, kind of bullies him into doing the right thing, the right thing for for himself. Right. Okay. So, um, so I could, can you talk a little bit about? I guess you kind of talked about where Jerry starts season three at, but can you talk, talk a little bit about her story arc for this season? Mm -hmm. for, for season three. Yeah. Yeah. So she, so she gets named CEO. And as I was just saying, she, she starts out by the very beginning when they get the, uh, the, the bad news and they're still in the airport in Croatia. And right away, she's like, I say, we cooperate. We do this, this, this. And Roman doesn't want to do that. And Shiv doesn't want to seem, be seen to agree with me. Exactly. She's playing, trying to play her cards a certain way. And Connor's out of it and no one's speaking to Kendall. And um, so I, I'm the one in contact with the White House. I'm trying to convince Logan. Um, and then that just, so I do get named CEO. And then I keep trying to finesse that. Um, and we're also being buffeted about by Kendall's claims. His, his um, He's claiming to have a lot of dirt on Logan. And so we're buffeted around dealing with that. And yet that's sort of how she functioned anyway. She was kind of running the show anyway without getting credit. And now she's running the show and not really getting credit, even though she has the title. She's not, no one's, if I, there are really funny little moments in season three where I would say, I think we need to do this. And Carl or Frank would kind of look over to Logan, like, is that what we're going to do? <laughs> like, look at me. I'm the one. Yeah. Uh, and also, though, there's this relationship between Jerry and Roman that started in season two, very unexpected in season two. And then I think it continues. And for Jerry's, from Jerry's point of view, she wants to try to adapt it into a functioning business relationship. And she would like him to be her 
she would like to be his mentor and she would like him to be his, her mentee and like, you know, really kind of shape him. And because there's a lot about Roman, especially as played by Kieran, you know, he's kind of a glamorous figure. He's, he's, you know, a loose cannon, but he's yeah. charismatic and he's witty and he's attractive. And, you know, so I think she's trying to draft that kind of arrangement um, and then without giving up t- too much away about the end right. of the season, everything blows up in everyone's face. And um, Roman and Jerry sort of break up, but I'm not sure whether they do because no one knows really what's coming. Yeah. You know, we don't know who are the allies and who are the, who are, you know, again, you know, the foes for each other. Right. Yet. Yeah. That's so what's great about succession is whenever it ends, you're always like, there's so many opportunities, there's so many different places you can go after this. You I never know. know. What, do you, what do you think will happen? God, that's a, that's a hard one. I mean, I'm kind of wondering if, you know, they're really, you know, the kids are really in and out or, you know, if they, or they can really get their way back in because even though they kind of, their father kind of is two steps ahead of them, they still all kind of, they're all, they're actually, they all kind of understand him to some degree. And I think there's some ways, I mean, I don't know, it'd be kind of nice to see some kind of fight between the siblings and to see who kind of takes control. We'll, we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Yet. Really interesting. It is very interesting. So you kind of, um, Oh, yeah, I was going to ask a little bit about, you know, Jerry, I, I guess I was going to go on with um, Jerry's, you kind of want to talk to you a little bit about, but talk a little bit more about her, her relationship with Roman and also what it's like to kind of build that with Karen Culkin together. Say that last part again. Oh, what? And, and what it's like to build that relationship with, with Karen Culkin, the, oh. the actor, as, you know, okay. as two actors together, I mean, yeah. Right. Um, well, it's funny because I, uh, I think I can speak for Karen to say that we both really enjoy each other's company off, off camera too, like where we've yeah. been friends for a while and we, you know, the whole relationship came out of a sort of an improv we did in season one at the end of season one that wasn't included in the episode, but oh, kind of sparked the idea. Yeah. We were kind of having flirtatious banter at a bar and it wasn't scripted and it just, but everyone, it cracked everyone up. It was so unlikely, you know, and then, so it's fun, but you know, the, the thing is we have, you know, there's conflict between our characters. So we're not, we go to do a scene. This is hard to describe to non-actors, but yeah. um, it, it like you, you each have your objective and they're at odds with each other. So even though that you love that actor and the person, you know, you're kind of going into battle. Like you're trying to make yeah. your, points. and if they won't look at you, you're frustrated. Like, Hey, look at me. I'm trying to convince you of something, you know? So there's this, but I think that makes it good and meaty. Like that's what acting is. And that's what drama is. It's conflict and like, you know, um, intention and trying to make a point with people. And so he's an excellent acting partner, um, but he's frustrating because Roman is frustrating for Jerry. And that, yeah. you know, becomes- yeah, I, I, just, I just love to see how, I love how it's evolved over the, the few seasons. And just, I think it's really great. You've got really great, Kind of tension chemistry. I don't know what to say. <laughs> tension chemistry. That's good. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, so I was wondering. I guess you could, you know, it's, you obviously have worked really well with Karen, but who else do you enjoy working with on Succession as an actor? Oh, um, actor. Really, everyone. I love working with Brian Cox. He's fantastic. I love Frank and Carl. Uh, David Rashi is a brilliant com- comic actor. Uh, Peter Freeman is one of the best actors I've ever known. I mean, they're just like sterling silver, you know, they're just yeah. great. Actors. So it's really fun having repartee with them. Um, there's an actress who just began a character just beginning to kind of unfold in season three, which was Carrie. Um, oh, yeah. assistant who it's implied they're having, you know, they're fooling around and I don't get to do that much with her, but what we have done is really fun because she's kind of like, her name's Carrie, but she's like a baby yeah. Jerry, <laughs> you know, like she's a little sharpie, you know? And so it's kind yeah. of these like little fun moments and she and I are very close off camera. We're very, very close friends. And then um, I love Matthew McFadden. Matthew McFadden oh, is- he's brilliant. He's brilliant. And he's so yeah. funny and he's so unique and he's such a gentleman uh, that it's funny he's playing this boorish guy. Oh yeah. And he had such a good arc this year and he's left in this mysterious position of like, Oh, what's his role going to be in the future dynamic of this family and what's going to become Shiv and Tom, if anything. And like, there's a power shift that happens. Yeah. They've, they've, he's become up. He's, he's up finally. 
Yes. And he's been eating shit all season, you know, like yeah. he didn't care that he was going to jail. She was trying to get him to shut up about worrying about it. And, you know, he, he, you can see, he does it so subtly, but you can see the wheels turning and the things adding up and all the insults accruing. And he, it's just brilliant because he underplays it beautifully and he's so natural. So I hope, I hope Jerry and Tom somehow, Tom and Jerry, <laughs> um, yeah, that's true. I hope we have more to do because we, we did have a scene in season one, I guess, that I enjoyed a lot with him. Um, and he's, I just think he's like the actor's actor, but I really feel that way of all of them. Alan Ruck is a brilliant partner. Oh yeah. He's, he's one brilliant. of those people alive. They're all, Sarah Snook, I'd love it if they weren't such arch enemies, our characters. I don't know why they are. It's sort of sad because they're the yeah. only, you know, women. That, I mean. <laughs> yeah. That, do you think maybe, yeah, it's the kind of like that old fashioned thing that women have to compete with one another in the workplace. It's maybe subsist within that company because it's still old fashioned in a lot of ways. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I would like to think that's an outdated idea, but I bet that's still going on in the business world. Um, so I don't know, but, you know, we'll see what happens in season four because whatever their angle is going to be, they still don't know how to do anything. They're, they've been these cosseted, you know, rich kids all their life. They're like yeah. middle-aged rich babies, you know? And so they still are going to need a Jerry. All of them are going yeah. to like that. Well, Jer to help yeah, Jerry's like a contrary kind of figure. Yes, exactly. So they, yeah. don't, know how, they don't know what she knows. So, um, I, gosh, it could go a million ways. And I, I literally don't know anything about what they oh, yeah. have. They picked up my option. <laughs> I know I'm in, I know I'm in season four, but oh, I don't know. Yeah. So I was curious if you ever like thought about or wrote any backstory between um, Jerry and, and Logan, because they obviously are very, very close that he, because he made Shiv, you know, her Shiv's godmother. And they've always been you know, friends for a very long time. So I'm curious if you ever kind of explore that. I think it's a really interesting relationship because there's obviously tension there, but he obviously yeah. really respects her and trusts her. Or he wouldn't put her, yes, her I in just her make up a backstory. I made up a backstory that um, I might have started in the company when I was more like Carrie's age. Like, right you know, maybe in my mid thirties and that I was a, a really promising lawyer and that my husband, you know, it's referenced in the very beginning of season one that I'm a widow. Right. And I just sort of thought, I wondered if my husband was um, like uh, a little bit like Laird's character, like a, right. you know, uh, um, someone that Logan might turn to for advice or, to oh, just something, you know, like a, a, and that I was a young, younger wife for this man, and that, you know, Logan found a place for me in legal, and that maybe he didn't hit on me because of his affection for my husband or just their relationship. Yeah. And that I just worked my way through that, and that, you know, um, now I'm like an old shoe. Like he doesn't, I don't think he thinks of me. He clearly doesn't think of me as anything sexual. No, at all. no, no. But I think maybe originally there was some, something there, you know, because yeah. why wouldn't there be? I think he would, I think he seems to like, if you look at Marsha, the character of Marsha and the character yeah. of, Kate, they're very sharp, you know, they're, they're not, yeah. they're not. He likes sharp people. women. Yes. He likes sharp. He likes tough women, I guess. He likes tough women as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I think maybe, you know, Jerry was at once upon a time his type and that now it's a little bit like an old married couple. Oh, I like that. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I'm like, you know, you'll get a cold if you don't wear your coat kind of thing. <laughs> no, that's, that's a cool thing. Yeah. Cool. Oh, that's yeah. Um, so your, your character often gets to travel around the world with, with, with the Roy family. What's your favorite location that you've got to shoot in? Cause you got to go all over the world really. I I love know. Oh my God. I love them all in turn so much. Um, I don't know how to answer even. I loved, oh. in season one, I loved being in that big drafty castle. Um, I love them all. I, oh, I yeah. love being in Scotland. Um, I guess uh, Italy, only because mm -hmm. it's Italy and we were filming in this, these villas oh, and yeah. we were in Tuscany. We, we were also in Lake Como, which is oh, yeah, that's right. right. beauty spot. And we were in Milan, so, which I had never been there. That was one place I'd never been in Italy, and I really liked it. Um, but it seemed to be a very fitting backdrop for us because there was something very um, Medici family about the way, mm -hmm. you know, the way it ends up. So to be, yeah, and that there was something like very brutal about how sunny it was. It felt like 
it felt like some like power struggles from the Renaissance, like just as old as the hills. Like, um, I, I think Jesse likes to write these situations, and the writing staff likes to 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 write these situations where they are these are these very wealthy people who have these very incredible circumstances and they travel these amazing places and they have amazing yachts and amazing hotels and the best of this and the best of that and they're always miserable yeah <laughs> they're in the middle of it being completely miserable that's true yeah so, they, they, uh, so we were like sweating and squinting while we were talking at the wet this beautiful wedding you know oh yeah and I, I was wondering do you guys get to speak with Jesse before he starts uh, when he's written everything about what your characters are going to or you just know everything week by week um, you kind of get it week by week and sometimes even within while you're shooting because oh, yeah. uh, they do make little rewrites and, and also they do a thing where they carefully painstakingly write it and you try to get it exactly as written and then they, they, they usually do a take or two where they just say well mess it up and just say what you know say what you want and you, it's often very close to what's written but it's a little looser and sometimes they'll find things maybe not for maybe, maybe that they don't use in that episode but they might find something funny that happens that they pick up on or something serious that happens that they pick oh, up yeah. on. Um, and Jesse will talk to you, but he doesn't, he kind of in a nice way, doesn't always have the answers, at least for the supporting characters. You know, right. I think maybe, maybe he, it, and, you know, I think his focus on the family, they're sort of the main characters. And I think he must, must, must have something of a blueprint for them. But when it gets to characters, um, supporting characters, I think that, you know, he's kind of finessing that as he goes and in a way leans on us to kind of fill, you know, come up with stuff so ourselves in. and like, yeah. And like jump in, like, I'm always kind of kidding around with Mark Mylod and Jesse and saying, play me coach, you know, <laughs> <laughs> put me in this episode, I could do this. Um, Cause that was how Jerry would be, you know, oh, yeah. trying to find her That's opening. And, and you said you do occasionally improv like you did with, with, um, with yeah. Karen when you found the yeah, we do. Um, slime puppy. When I call him a slime puppy, that just came out of my mouth. That was all. That was a total improv. Very cool. <laughs> and I was the fame. I should get a writing credit. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a good that's a fun kind of. It's kind of it must be fun kind of doing all these insults that you probably would never be able to see. You would never ever say. Yeah, life. yeah. Exactly. You, get, you get out of your tension. You're 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 not. I get. No, not angry. But you kind of get out of your frustrations. I guess in some ways. So. Yeah, and it's hard to insult on the level of our writing staff. Like they come up yeah. with the whole most hilarious things. So it's hard to like try to do it, to try to improv on their level. Like, come on, it's really hard. Oh yeah. And you kind of said you don't really know where Jerry's going season four, but do, is there anything you're kind of looking forward to exploring or any kind of new new ways you well, want to see her, how her, she kind of goes into? Yes, I mean, I'd like to see what happens if anything between Jerry and Roman, like in this new shake, shaken up universe. Um, I would, I'm curious that if we'd ever see her daughters, which have been referenced very obliquely. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, it's hard. I don't let myself daydream about that too much because. Oh yeah, that makes sense. And we may get there and the whole season is going off in this crazy direction. And they're like, oh, I, I wasted a lot of time kind of filling in this fantasy of it being this. And it's, oh, I, I need to rethink everything on the, on the spot. So I try to just stay loose between seasons and roll with what they write. Cause it's, I, I'm very confident it will be fascinating what they write. Oh yes, yeah. so they're so good. They're the they're the best. Oh yeah, I was. Are you working on anything right now, or are you looking? Are you? Is there something you want to talk about that you that's coming out soon? Yes, I have two films that are coming out in the Tribeca Film Festival, and just oh, a couple. Exciting. One is called The Year Between, and it's a. Well, they're both kind of they have something in common. They're both um, written, directed, and starred by single people. So wow. this one is this young woman named Alex Heller. It's her first full length film, but she's been working on it for a long time. It's partially autobiographical somewhat, and it's really good and funny. It has very unique tone. And Steve Buscemi and I play her parents. Wow. Really funny, but it's kind of raw and it's very uh, fresh. And I haven't seen it yet, but I'm dying to. Um, so I play the mother in that, her mother in that. And uh, it's a big meaty part and it's very interesting. Um, and then the other one, I have more of a supporting role in, but a very good part too. And this is BJ Novak's feature, Vengeance, oh, wow. which is a Blumhouse film. And that is sort of a thriller comedy. And BJ wrote it, stars in it, directed it, same thing. 
um, but he's a you know an older, more experienced performer. Um, and it's really unique too, I think. It's really fun. It's like a, it's got some very dark, um, like uncomfortable, triggering kind of subject matter. And yet the, you kind of get to look at it close because he's using humor so artfully. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't- no, I know what you mean, yeah. Get to, your defense is up about it because it's funny. Yeah. It's, it's really great. I mean, I haven't seen the, that film either, but I can't wait. And oh, then I just funny. finished. I just finished shooting on um, uh, um, Hannah Mark's movie Turtles All the Way Down, which is an adaptation of a John Green novel. Oh, I love same. John Green. Yeah, me too. I grew up so I got to work him. with him and yeah. Hannah Mark, and I just completed that. And I also worked on the um, sequel to Waco, which is like a second season uh, a few years ago. I think a couple years oh, yeah. ago. There I remember a- seeing that. Yeah. Yeah, limited series about Waco. And so this is um, a sequel to that. Very cool. And I like to uh, end the by asking people, like, what, what three words would you describe, you would use to describe secession? Um, rye, upper class, torture. Mm, I like that. Nice. <laughs> well, thank you so much for speaking with me today. My pleasure.